So in this video, I'm going to work through the simulation mode in Insomnia so you can get a feel for what it's supposed to do and how it works. And then you can repeat that experiment for yourself. So basically, the simulation mode allows us to send in requests and we will receive canned responses. That's at its um, heart what it does. So I will go through that process to see what we get. So the first thing I have to do is get from the entities list. And I'm going to do each of these as separate requests, although you could be saving them as you go through. So I'm just going to do a get, and I'll send through the default get apichallenges.herokoapp.com slash sim slash entities, and we receive a list of JSON entities coming back. At its heart, we've now issued a get request on a server to receive a list of things that we can work with. So now that I know that entity one exists, I can retrieve that individual entity from the server. And that's what the next thing in the simulator is suggesting we do. So I can get from the entities endpoint, the entity that has the ID one, and I'm not putting in any headers. So it's going to come back as JSON. And there is the entity one, it's got an ID, a name and a description. So what I can do is I can try and get one that doesn't exist. Now I could get any of the entities on that list, which are ID one to eight, because nine and 10 are reserved from other simulation requests. But I'm going to issue one that I know does not exist, which is 404. And I'll get 404 not found. And just in case you think it's the 404 that is triggering the status code, I'm going to issue a one for 40, and we'll get a not found. So the simulator is clever enough to know which entities exist and which don't. And the example there is just an example to make the simulator work. But you could enter any value you particularly wanted there. If you wanted to try for number 13, enter 13, and you should get the same response. So now we're going to issue a post request to create uh, an item. So I'm going to create this a post and it says use the entities endpoint itself. Let's make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. So we're going to post to the entities itself. Now when we post to create something, we need to add a body, otherwise it won't know what to create. And in this case, the body is given for the simulator. And the reason it's named Bob is because that's what the simulator is hard coded to send back. So I made a mistake there, put in the slash, because if I put a trailing slash on the end, I'm basically saying use the entity which is putting in this value, but I added no value. So there was a 404. If I post to the entity's endpoint directly, then it says 201 created. And the headers that come back should show us the correct information for a creation. So this is saying we've created it and we've created it at entities endpoint 11. Now, entities did not show number 11 when we were looking at it in the list. So if I go off to entities slash 11, the simulator should be clever enough to send back the entity we just created. Now, because it's a simulator, we didn't just create it, but the process of going through the steps in the simulation makes it seem as though we are. So we essentially created an item which was given the ID 11 from this data. So the next thing in the simulation is to amend an entity. So by choosing an entity that exists, number 10, we saw that in the list of entities when we came through, I'm going to issue a post request to change the name to Eris. So when I send this, I'm expecting to receive a 200 response back, which tells me that it has amended. And there is the details that we've amended. So I amended number 10, there's ID 10, and we amended it to be the name Eris. Eris. So it's simulating an amendment request. If we looked in the entities list, um, ID 10 would not have the name Eris because we hadn't amended it at that point. So I can also put items to create them. So I'm going to put, and I'm going to put at an ID. So we will put at ID 10 to amend it. So imagine that we just done I get, let me get the entities. Where's item 10? There's item 10. Item 10 says entity number 10. So we're going to amend that with a put. So I'm going to put into slash 10, 
the name Eris will send that and it will say you have amended number 10 and you've amended it to the name Eris. So I can amend things with a put. I can create things with a put. So I'm going to create entity Bob at item 11 and send that. And there we go, 201 created Bob. So I can also delete things. I've got a simulated delete. The only item that I can I can delete is number nine. So I'm going to issue a delete request and it should say, okay, I've done that. It's a 204. There's nothing else to say except for I have deleted it. So one thing we can do when we're experimenting is if I get the entities, I can get them in JSON. So I might want to experiment a little bit with the accept headers and I will accept application slash XML and we should receive it in XML. So there are a few extra little bits and pieces that we can do with the simulator to have it respond. But hopefully that's a good enough example for working through the simulator just to get you used to the tooling, just to get used to sending requests, changing the verbs. And you could try automating. It's a very simple set of requests to automate. And if you do them in that sequence that's in the simulator, it will simulate the effect of running a bunch of tests in sequence. Just an easy way to get started with the API testing and automating to get used to the tooling.